right at the end of 2022, I got my feet in the rather odd looking Salomon S-Lab Genesis. Uh, I tested them out on the channel after hearing lots of good feedback, and I was really impressed with how the shoes performed out there on the trails of Cornwall. It was actually an S-Lab performance shoe from the brand that gave you a good level of cushioning and protection from the midsole. So when I heard that Salomon were producing a non S-Lab version of this shoe, I thought you guys would be really interested in it. And here it is, the rather good looking Salomon Genesis. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you the lowdown on the shoe and we're gonna be taking them out for their first run. Welcome back folks and thanks for joining us for another First Impressions video. I'm Lloyd Purvis and this is Run For Adventure. So we've got six more sleeps until Christmas day and I gotta say I'm really looking forward to this year. We're just gonna have a nice quiet Christmas here in Cornwall at home, myself and Liga, watching lots of cheesy Christmas movies on the sofa and probably eating way too much tasty food. But more importantly, you've only got three more sleeps until the entry closes for this year's giveaway extravaganza. Now, if you haven't entered guys, you really do wanna get in the mix because we've got over a thousand pounds worth of running goodies from all of these incredible running brands. So you really don't wanna miss out. So I've left a link in the description below for that giveaway video. Go and follow all the details of how to enter and get in the mix because you know we could be pulling your name out of the hat on our Christmas Eve special. But best of luck with the giveaway, but let's get back to the shoe review. So let's run you through a few specs first and the new Salomon Genesis is gonna retail in the UK for 160 pounds. They run off an eight mil drop. So we've got a 30 mil stack height on the heel and 22 mil under your forefoot. As far as weight goes in a UK 10, they tip the scales at 284 grams and the shoe should be launching the 1st of January, 2024. As far as the construction goes, there are quite a few things that cross over between the two models. So the first one being that Salomon have still chosen to use the super durable performance fabric matrix in the construction. So we've got it along wrapping around the midfoot and going over the toe box there. However, the upper design is more traditional in keeping compared to that sort of booty construction with that elasticated ankle gaiter that we got on the S-Lab Genesis. Also crossing over is the active chassis, as Salomon like to call it. So we've basically got this sort of cradle built into the back of the shoe where your heel sits down into it, then it wraps around your foot on the lateral and on the medial side. That's been designed to give you good levels of stability when you're running on sort of rocky technical trails. We've also got their speed lace system. So you see this in most of their trail running shoes these days. So no traditional laces. We've just got this cord system. You pull it down nice and tight around your midfoot, then you slide down the plastic locking mechanism and then stow those laces away in that tongue in the pocket and then you are ready to go running. Moving down to the midsole and outsole setup and we've got a good helping of Salomon's energy foam and if I push into this it does feel nice and soft so these should offer me a pretty comfortable ride out there on today's run. If I flip them over you can also see that we've got a bit more width at the shank or the midfoot of that midsole compared to the performance driven S-Lab version so the shoes should feel nice and planted out on the trails. And last but not least, we've got this chunky Chevron 4.5 mil lug pan on the outsole. And that's been given a full covering of Salomon's Contigrip all-terrain rubber. It's actually very similar to the design on the S-Lab Genesis. And, and that shoe actually performed way better when it comes to grip and traction. And it only really struggled when it came to running in really muddy conditions. So there it is, Salomon's latest shoe in their ever-growing trail running lineup. And I don't know about you, but I think they've done a fantastic fantastic job on the design, especially in this black and yellow colorway. I think it's a really good looking shoe. However, we know it's not about looks, it's not about colorway, it's all about performance. So I think it's about time I, I got these shoes on my feet, got out on the beautiful trails of Cornwall, and let's get running. OK, 
Okay, so we've reached the gateway of the Hale Towns. That's where today's run is gonna go down. So we had, what, two miles of tarmac of the hard stuff uh, getting into the Towns. Midsole felt nicely cushioned, nice and comfortable. No issues there at all soaking up the tarmac. And today we've got planned at sort of half marathon distance. So yesterday I did eight miles on the road and this is the first run in a back-to-back -back weekend training for the Arc of Attrition. So 13 miles today and then hopefully we're gonna get over 20 miles tomorrow. The fit feels pretty good. The shoe's hugging my midfoot nice and tightly. Uh, nice level of cushioning in that gusseted tongue. Good lock down in the heel and I would say there slightly short on sizing like a lot of salomons are so i've actually gone up to a uk 10 in the genesis and it's fitting like a glove so let's get out on the towers and test the trail shoe in its natural habitat we're going to be following the arc of attrition route along the towers heading up to godreevy lighthouse and we'll see how far we get but like i say 13 miles hopefully today so let's get out there let's get running over the clouds across the ocean i was trying to So if you are running the Ark next year, you hear lots of talk about the Hail Towers or the Dunes of Doom, as Mudge Crew likes to call it. They're really not that terrifying and they are quite easy to navigate and you're never gonna get too lost. And what you need to be following is the big sort of Cornish signs, the big slate stones across the Towers. This is one right here. So these are the big slate stones that are sunk into the sand. So you wanna be keeping your eyes peeled for these, but there'll also be some sort of coast path signs along the way. And I'll, I'll show you those in a minute. These are the coast path signs that you need to follow. So you can see we've got a yellow arrow and an acorn. You always wanna follow the post with the arrow and the acorn. Over the clouds, across the ocean, I was trying seven miles down so I'm going to be turning around just up there on the coast path and heading back home. First thing I've got to say, not shoe related but my legs are feeling great today even though I did do that eight miles of road yesterday and I've done a few big weeks building up to this. Had a massage on Wednesday that always makes a difference but it's so good to be out here on the coast path getting in a run and with the legs feeling strong running all the hills and it feeling quite easy so Things are definitely heading in the right direction. The Salomon Genesis, again, the same feeling, really good straight out of the box. So the run I did yesterday, it was very wet yesterday. My feet got a little bit sore towards the end of it. So I was a little bit worried, running sort of 30 miles in a new shoe straight out of the box. I shouldn't have been, it feels nice and plush. I would say it is a little bit narrow in the toe box when I compare it to the width I had in the S-Lab Genesis, but not causing me any issues, fits my foot shape like a glove. So definitely first impressions are pretty good so far. Right, so let's crack on with the run. Like I said, we've got probably another three quarters of a mile and then we're gonna be turning around. Downhill, all the way home. <laughs> So we just ticked over nine miles. It's getting pretty gloomy out here. Just gonna take on a little bit of energy with the precision fuel and hydration energy chew. Looking forward to that. And I'm gonna be grabbing my head torch out in a minute because it's gonna be dark soon. So we've got about four miles to go, maybe five miles till we get home. But when we get there, 
I'll give you a full breakdown on how the new Salomon Genesis has performed on today's run. All right, let's get home. So that is the first run of the weekend complete. And we actually managed 13 and a half miles out there tonight at a pretty reasonable pace considering it was across the Towns. Body, legs felt really strong, uh, even carried a good pace right at the end of the run. So all I've got to do now is get myself recovered. So there's going to be lots of rolling, going to get the massage gun out, and we're taking on some electrolytes just to rehydrate the system before tomorrow's run. So really happy with how the body performed, but how did the shoes feel? So first up, let's talk all about the outsole and the level of grip and traction it gave me. So I mentioned it earlier in the video, I was actually surprised at the level of performance I got from the outsole on the S-Lab Genesis. And the same goes for these two. So the rubber seemed nice and sticky on the tarmac sections early on, but also on the wet rocky sections. And then this 4.5 mil lug, seemed to give me a good level of traction in that soft sand and in the mud. And we did have a couple of pretty muddy sections on tonight's run. I actually think the S-Lab Genesis and the Genesis outsole are two of the more consistent sort of performing outsoles when it comes to grip and traction from Salomon. The energy foam seemed to give me a nice comfortable ride on the roads and the trails, but I'm not sure whether there's any form of rock plate worked into that midsole construction. I know with the S-Lab Genesis, you had Salomon's Profil film in there, but there was a couple of times on some rocky trails where I did notice uh, a couple of sharp rocks sort of pushing through that midsole compound. Not to the point where it hurt my foot or it was uncomfortable or anything, but I definitely knew those rocks were there. The speed lace system worked well for me, like it tends to do with Salomon shoes. So it gave me a nice secure lockdown and it stayed locked down throughout the run. And then those laces felt nice and comfortable over the top of my foot because of this plush padded gusseted tongue. Uh, the midsole shape seemed to work really well for my instep, so it gave me good levels of support underfoot. Like I mentioned uh, earlier on, the only thing is, is the toe box shape does seem to pinch in quite early, making it quite narrow towards the end of the toe. Now, towards the end of the run, probably the last mile, I could feel a little bit of irritation on the outside edge of both little toes. Uh, it didn't lead to a blister or a hot spot or anything like that, but I think if I'd carried on the run maybe four, five, six more miles, I could have had an issue there. Now, this could just be down to the fact that it's a new shoe, needs a bit more bedding in, or it could be down to the shape of that toe box, but I guess only time will tell. I suppose the question is, which do I prefer when it comes to the Genesis model? Is it the more sort of performance driven, more expensive S-Lab version, or is it these? Now, obviously it is early days for the Genesis, but I've got to say it, I think I do prefer the S-Lab Genesis. It just seemed to be a little bit more nimble, a little bit more responsive, slightly lighter when it comes to the weight. I also think that it maybe had a bit more width in that toe box so it didn't pinch in as early and it definitely gave me a bit more underfoot protection when I was running on rocky trails. Obviously you'd expect all of those things from Salomon's S-Lab performance range and the fact that the shoe costs £30 more retailing at a pretty expensive £190 but because it is an older model I've actually found them online for £135 and that's £25 cheaper than these and I think that's pretty good value. Now this was my first run in the shoes and I definitely want to get some more miles in them to see how they bed in over time. But at the moment, at this precise moment in time, I think I would probably go for the S-Lab option. But there you have it, Salomon's new Genesis trail running shoe and how they performed out there today. Really hope you enjoyed the video guys, hope you found it helpful. Uh, don't forget if you did to like, comment, share and subscribe. And if you've got any questions about the Genesis, please feel free to get them in the comments below and we'll try and get back to them as soon as we can but for now guys hope you have a great rest of your week we'll be back on the channel very soon and as always stay safe and keep on running and probably eating way too much tasty food but more importantly there's only three more sleep no yeah yeah Compared to that sort of booty uh, design with the elasticated uh, ankle gaiter that you get with the s sort of um, sock-like sort of booty construction with that elasticated ankle gaiter built in that you've got on the S-Lab 